Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest Farm Files episode of FP Next. I'm one of your co-hosts, Sarah McNaughton, and I'm here with Kurt Arns. Hi, Sarah. It's great to be with you today. We're, you know, happy to have our listeners back with us for today's episode because I think you're planning to talk about something kind of fun, but also really useful for youth and adults involved in agriculture, particularly the livestock industry, right? Absolutely. So today we have an exciting topic for this episode, and we're going to chat all about stock shows and conventions since like that's the time of year it's coming up on soon. And Kurt, I know we had some plans to try to meet up at the Black Hill Stock Show in Rapid City, South Dakota, to record a special episode, but schedules got the better of us this spring, so we'll have to wait on that one. Yeah, the Stock Show at Rapid City has been on our bucket list for a really long time, but this year we have a senior in high school, our son Zach's playing basketball, and our conference tournament, unfortunately, lines up about the same time as the Black Hill Stock Show, so Zach wins out this year, and he'd better hit some threes for us during these games (laughs) because I'm missing the Stock Show to watch him play, so I want to (laughs) see some points scored. (laughs) Absolutely. Good luck to them and their team. And as much fun as we would have had recording from the Cowboy Bar at the Monument at the Stock Show, we're still going to chat about some of our favorite stock shows and experiences about the shows we've attended all the time, whether that is for work or fun. And if I remember correctly, you had a local show you got to work with down there in Nebraska, right? Yeah. um, When I was right out of college, I worked part time for Nebraska Extension as a uh, county assistant in Knox County. And part of my duties during that time was working the Exarban Livestock Show, which was held at that time in Omaha in the fall. So you know what Exarban stands for? Any ideas? I don't. It is actually Nebraska spelled backwards because, and I learned this because. I would have never guessed. When, I know no, you wouldn't. It, when it was founded back in like the 1890s, <laughs> the economy and everything was considered moving backwards. And so the founders decided, okay, we'll just <laughs> make our new show backwards. You know, Exarban is Nebraska spelled backwards. So it started with like a bunch of Omaha merchants who just wanted to have like a booster club. And so it started out as a ball. Eventually they had, uh, horse races. And in 1927, they founded the Exarban Stock Show. And it was always held in Omaha. But today that show has been relocated to the Nebraska State Fair at Fauner Park in uh, Grand Island. So when I helped with Exarban, I was just I was just basically a runner. It was helping out, you know, in the show ring and helping judges however I could. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of fun being around really good livestock in a big, high quality show. But uh, you had a chance to head to Rapid City and take in the Black Hills show last year, right? Yes. So last year we got to go to the Black Hill Stock Show for the first time. And I'd always wanted to go a lot like you. And it was such a fun time. I know it was so great to see all the fantastic cattle from really across the Midwest and even beyond. Um, it was really cool. Uh, my brother-in-law is uh, was pro rodeoing last year, so we went and got to see him rope in the PRCA rodeo. We got to go to the bucking horse sale there, and then I did a lot more shopping at the trade show and at the Teskey's booth than my wallet probably would have liked, um, but it was a really great time down there, and I'm excited to go again this year, too. So if you had to pick out a favorite thing from your attendance last year, what would it be? Honestly, the bucking horse sale was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Usually, we have not much for rough stock events, but it was so cool to see those young horses just do what they're bred to do. And it was a really great atmosphere. We maybe had a couple Bloody Marys while we were there. So it was a really fun time to sit and watch in that nice arena. Yep. Uh, That show is really, really on my bucket list now. So after hearing, you know, about your kind of adventures at the at the stock show at Rapid City, um, Mm-hmm. Next year, we won't have as much basketball on our schedule with our son graduating. So I'm hopeful I can make good on that in 2025. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think by that time, we can even have a video podcast in the works and planned for for at that cowboy bar. We'll get back there and get it done. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. So besides how much fun we have attending these stock shows and covering them for our jobs... There are a ton of benefits that stock shows bring in the few days they run. And I know, Kurt, one of the top things these shows do is give youth and younger showmen a lot of life lessons, whether that's building competition, teaching showmanship and sportsmanship. Those are just kind of a few of the things these young producers learn. 
I know I am, was, and still am a huge proponent of youth livestock shows. And your kids have done some livestock shows as well, too. So I'm sure you're as big of a fan of it as I am. Yeah, I mean, we've been pretty pretty much small scale, but, uh, you know, 4-H and FFA and showing livestock with those wonderful organizations kind of in my blood. When I was young, uh, we exhibited hogs and dairy and cattle at mostly at the county fair. And our kids have shown cattle and a lot of small critters, uh, poultry, rabbits and dogs at, you know, county fair, Nebraska State Fair. But I always thought of progress shows and stock shows kind of as a a tune-up for youth who will be exhibiting in the summer at county and state fairs and other, you know, really big breed livestock shows all across the country, which a lot do, um, you know, but there's more than competition on the line. It's a growth and leadership building experience and a lot, well, a lot like athletics and academics and school 4-H and FFA, you know, really build our next gen ag leaders. I, I think there's probably some research to back that up, right? Absolutely. I know we did a ton um, that was always in our back pocket that we always knew all the benefits of 4-H and FFA. And I actually just read a great article from North Carolina Extension and it's talking about the main six benefits for youth showing livestock. And I'm sure you can guess a lot of those, but let's go through that list. And so it's building social relationships and it's youth developing lifelong friendships and social contacts. I know a lot of people I even knew from showing livestock are still people I see around the ag industry today. Building character is the next one. Um, you know, it teaches responsibility, confidence, sportsmanship, how to deal with loss. Family togetherness, like we were kind of visiting about, showing livestock is a whole family activity, especially when you're hauling around all those stock shows. They get exposure to competition and showing livestock allows youth to participate in competitive events and get them used to, you know, the winning and the losing and kind of dealing with all of that. And then also exposure to cultures. Um, you know, they're hosted all over the country and showing livestock really gives kids that chance to go through different cities and different people that maybe they wouldn't be exposed to otherwise. And then I think one of the main benefits too, especially for animal husbandry, is the knowledge and care of animals. It teaches them how to care for them the best, especially when you're feeding them out. It was especially important if they're going to pursue a career in an animal-related field. So those are the six main benefits. And I think all of us who are involved in shows can really, you see that firsthand, especially in like the 4-H kids that, that I worked with in Extension, you could see them from year to year growing and building. I'm sure that's exactly what you've seen happening in your kids, right? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I can give you a really personal example. I mean, when uh, when all the social activities, including, you know, classroom learning were canceled in Nebraska in the spring of 2020 due to COVID, I mean, you know, county fairs in the state went on. And I mean, a lot of, gr you know, really great and close precautions were added, but county fairs and the state fair was held that year too. And it was really one of the few opportunities during that really hard time for kids to socialize and compete with each other and see each other, see their friends. And I mean, on a personal level, I think it kind of saved our daughter Taylor because she was a senior in high school in 2020. And you know, she was looking forward to speech and spring track season her senior year. Um, she was on track to go to state for speech. But then on March 13th, 2020, I think it was, everything shut down. So, I mean, she like lived in the barn after that. She went into raising show rabbits commercially, um, took care of her calves. You know, we had more bucket calves that year to take care of. Um, and put a lot of time in other 4-H and FFA projects. And those kids that year, I mean, she was depressed at all the cancellations. Uh, you know, there was an FFA leadership trip to Washington that was canceled, district and state FFA, the entire track season, prom, I mean, graduations. So it was hard. I mean, our school did a pretty good job, eventually had prom and graduation later in the summer, but it was tough. So during that time, you know, her turning to a lot, her livestock and those projects um, was really important, not just from all the benefits that you said, but just personally, I think for like mental well-being, you know, I, I kind of like to think that the animals kind of saved her. And uh, I, I don't think she's the only one. I, I talked with a lot of youth 4-H and FFA members and, you know, they really put a lot of time in their projects and especially in their critters during during that really hard time. So, I mean, 
you know, yeah, uh, livestock has been really important to our kids over the years. That's for sure. Um, especially to that piece about culture um, and the mental health benefits like we visited about and in the livestock world, everyone gets to travel to some really cool places for showing. And I never got to go show anywhere outside of North Dakota and even my county. But some of those major shows are the San Antonio Livestock Show and Rodeo, the North American International Livestock Expo Exposition down in Kentucky, the National Western Stock Show and Rodeo in Denver, and the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. And Kurt, I think we've all like heard about these shows. Are any of those on your bucket list to eventually attend? Well, you know, Denver's not too far from me, but I just returned uh, from a trip uh, last November to San Antonio for an irrigation show. So I got to see mm-hmm. the Alamo for the first time. Uh, San Antonio was really cool. So I kind of feel like that would be a, a neat one to attend. I mean, everything's bigger in Texas, right? So I'm guessing it would be a big show. But that said, I mean, Black Hills is a lot closer. It's just five five hours down the road for me. So, <laughs> you know, after hearing about, uh, you know, the show from you when you attended last year, I'm really anxious to get to Rapid City. Yeah. And I know this year we might not be able to get our Farm Progress family together down in Rapid City, but... My fiance and I are still going to go this year. Um, what are some of those top things you're hoping to take in when we do make it down for that little group trip down to the stock show? Well, I know if my wife's along, the trade show and the Western art show would be a big deal. Mm-hmm. And of course, the rodeo. Everybody, I mean, you know, we can't, you can't beat a good rodeo. So, um, but I really would enjoy Absolutely. like the horse events. I think the sales would be really interesting along with, of course, the, you know, the stock shows. I think there's probably a lot of entertainment around the stock show center during, during that time, I'm guessing. So, I, and I'm sure we'd mm-hmm. find some other livestock folks to talk with too, right? Of course. I know the editorial team at Farm Progress, besides just the two of us, we're always on the lookout for new stories and contacts. And some of our favorite places to go for those are stock shows, fairs, and farm shows. Yeah, I mean, we, we like to kind of combine fun and, and work a lot of times, I think. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, our family, we've been attending the Nebraska State Fair for, I guess, at least a decade since our, our children were pretty, pretty little. And we always attend the fair. Um, the kids compete in 4-H and FFA shows. And but we also like to take in like the University of Nebraska has like a birthing a birthing pavilion where they, you know, have all the newborn livestock. And so the everyone loves that. The exhibit halls, the stock shows at State Fair and all the entertainment. And of course, the food, fair food is always the best. So when we go, I usually always cover it for work. Food. Yeah, fair food. You can't beat it. And, and you just never know what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Either. Something new every year. But I usually cover it for work, but the family's having fun too. So, you know, and last year we timed it just right. Uh, we're there on the day when they, they had their parade, the State Fair Parade, which included one of my other favorites, which is a whole bunch of antique tractors. So that was that was a good day at the fair. Absolutely. I know for a lot of us, these trips to shows turn into kind of like that mix of fun and work. Um, and I know when Cole and I went down to Rapid City last year for the stock show, we of course had a lot of fun, but we got to do a really cool feature um, with the president of South Dakota Soil Health Coalition that was a cover story of a first gen rancher and kind of how he is implementing holistic management into his operation, which was really cool. And then of course, we made sure to take a stop through Deadwood, South Dakota on our way home. So it's always great to kind of do that balance of work and fun. Yeah, that that story um, from West River, South Dakota was awesome That for Dakota Farmer last year that you did. That was really nice. Yeah, and anytime you go to the hills, you know, Deadwood is always on your your stop list. So that I'm glad you got a chance Absolutely. to pass through Deadwood. Um, you know, the thing about fairs and stock shows um, that we've kind of talked about, but um, there's always, you know, kind of something for everyone to take in. I mean, there's never a dull moment. And the funny thing um, is that when we're traveling like far, far from home, sometimes we nearly always run into someone we know. I mean, my wife makes fun of me. Do you know everyone? She always says, but it, it happens all, I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me all the time. I'll run into somebody I know in a place that I, you know, am just working, but I don't expect to see them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy. The other important thing that we haven't talked about is how a good animal husbandry is on display at stock shows, you know, and county fairs and state fairs. Mm -hmm. Um, 
with the majority of our population so removed from ag, it's really um, a good time for urban folks to get exposed to agriculture in a in a really close up way. That's why it's important for 4-H and FFA youth to take that animal care really seriously and to answer questions if if folks have questions for them and to help them. I don't know, learn a little bit more about agriculture and what it's like to take care of a market steer or lamb or finished hog. It can provide, you know, an opportunity for an ag literacy lesson. Always time. Obviously, of course, in Extension, we're both big proponents of ag education, especially when it's about livestock, which is all of ours, our favorite passions here and here at FP Next. But I know for sure we're going to get together down the stock show and do that special video podcast. Um, but until then, we're going to have to talk about our favorites and kind of our favorite things. So we hope you've enjoyed reminiscing with us about some of our favorite things and maybe bring some ideas for a future trip for our listeners, too. Absolutely, Sarah. We'll, we're going to make it to Rapid City together yet for a, a video podcast next year. I think we should set that up now and put it on the calendar. Um, but it's, for now, it's about time mm-hmm. to wrap things up. We want to thank our listeners for allowing us into your tractor or truck cab on your farm, in your field. Um, thanks for tuning in and listening in with us today. A special thanks goes out to our digital and marketing team members who put in a lot of work with us. So a shout out to Jen Kokel and Grace Rinchy. And be sure to follow Farm Progress on social media to stay up to date with ag news and more. And to check out the digital edition of your regional publication at farmprogress.com. And we're super excited for our next episode of FP Next. And we're going to talk about how biologicals are the wild west of agriculture from Dr. Laura Thompson, who is the Ag Technologies Educator for Cropping Systems and is an Extension Educator with University of Nebraska Extension. Yes, Laura is the esteemed director of Nebraska's on-farm research program, so she can speak to us about a bunch of farm studies on how well biologicals work. So it'll be great to have Laura on the show, and I'm sure our listeners will be interested in what she can share about crop biologicals and biostimulants and how to set up studies on your own farm and ranch to test them out. Absolutely. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along with FP Next wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember, if it's agriculture, your friends at Farm Progress have you covered. Wishing you all high yields and good weather. We'll see you next time. <laughs>